So how many of these am I actually going to get sewn up? Hi, my name is Sarah and thank you so much for joining me today. We're here to talk about my fall sewing plans. Now, if you are a longtime viewer, you may have noticed that I haven't been doing plans videos for a little while. And that is because I needed to do my closet switchover where I put away all my summer clothes and got out all of my fall and winter clothes. And then I needed to go through everything that I had, try it all on and see what I actually need in my closet. Because otherwise, if I don't have a plan, I find that I just sort of go off and make one-off things and who knows if they actually go with anything else. And I've actually kind of been doing that for a couple of months and it's not going that well. So I really wanted to sit down and organize and make some plans for the fall and winter. Now I 100% have too many plans on my list and I know that I won't get to all of these, but I'm going to try to do as many of them as I can. And I also try to limit myself as much as possible to things that I actually really need. So grab yourself a drink and a snack and let's just get started. This is the area of my closet that needs the most work. I realized when I was sorting through my wardrobe that a lot of my layering pieces are old, like older than five years. A lot of them are ready to wear, so they never really fit me that well to begin with. And some of them are looking pretty ratty at this point. So I do need to replace a number of things. And I think the reason why I'm not really drawn to sewing layering pieces that often is because usually they're a little bit more involved if we're talking about jackets. Maybe they might have a lining or need tailoring or something. And usually that's not a project that I feel like tackling. So I haven't made too many things for myself, although I am trying to get better. So getting straight into the plans, the first layering piece that I would like to make is a pattern that I actually don't own right now. It's the Pattern Emporium Grab a Cuppa Cardi. I really like this cardigan. I do have some other button front cardigan patterns in my stash already, and I'm currently debating whether I should just use one of those. But I really do think that I probably will go pick up the Grab a Cuppa Cardi pattern because it has many different options. I think that I could make different views and have totally different looks. And the pattern is different from the ones that I already have. So, I mean, I've pretty much talked myself into buying it, but I haven't actually done it yet. The fabric that I want to use is this fabric that I bought from Surge Fabric Shop last year. This is their Moraine sweater knit. And then I forget what this one's called, but it's a matching ribbing fabric. It's kind of like a sweater knit ribbing. And the two are meant to coordinate so the colors match perfectly. I do already own a white cardigan, but it has really fitted sleeves. So it's really more of a summer cardigan because I can't really layer underneath it that easily. So I think that the grab a cup of cardi with the fuller sleeve would be really perfect for layering. And a white cardigan is just such a staple. I know that I would wear it again and again. The second layering piece on my list is the Avid Seamstress The Blazer. So I got this in a needle sharp kit. This was the final needle sharp kit that I purchased and I've sewn up all of the other ones that I bought. This is the only one left. And the fabric that came in the box is this cotton flannel and it did come with a coordinating lining, but I can't actually find it right now, but it's just like a basic navy acetate lining. There's nothing special about it. And I know the reason that I've been putting this off and it's because I have a paper version of the pattern that came in the kit and therefore I need to trace it and I don't like tracing, but I really just need to buckle down and do it because I do have all of the supplies that I need to actually make this blazer and I just need to actually do it. I also do not own a navy blazer currently and I do think that it's something that I would wear a lot the style of this blazer is pretty casual and I actually think that it would be relatively easy to sew because it's a little bit less complex. And so I would definitely like to make it up for this fall and winter because I think that I would wear it quite a bit. The final layering piece that I have on my list is the Hey June Handmade Evans Blazer. It comes with two views, but the one that I am interested in specifically is the one with the shawl collar. The other version has more of a waterfall front and I'm not really interested in that one. It's really the one that looks more like a traditional blazer. So I mentioned this pattern in my fall shop my stash video and I've still been thinking about it. I do think that a Ponte blazer would fit in with my lifestyle a lot better than a really tailored blazer. And I also think it would just be more comfortable to wear. So the fabric that I picked for this one is a Ponte knit. I think I got this one from Style Maker. I can't really remember, but it's in this beautiful kind of plummy, like burgundy color. I do think it would go with many things in my wardrobe. I can see myself wearing it over a plaid shirt or like a turtleneck or just lots of different things. So I would really like to make this one up as part of my plans. So now let's move on to... So 
So I'm really glad that I did my closet clean out because prior to doing it, I thought that bottoms and specifically pants was going to be my area of biggest need. When I put away my fall and winter clothes, many of them at that time didn't fit me. And so I am happy to report that my weight has stabilized somewhat. And when I tried things on, actually most of the things that I had put away do fit me now. There's only a couple of pieces that are still just a little bit too tight in the waist. And so I don't really need as many pants as I thought that I was going to need. I did not put any skirts on the list because I tend not to wear skirts too much in the fall and winter. And I do have a number of really nice ones in my closet already. That's not to say that if I have a few spare moments and I get inspired that I won't make any skirts, but it's just not my area of biggest need. I do have three pairs of pants on this list because I do need some more work appropriate pants. And the first one is Simplicity 9647. This is from their newest fall collection and I don't currently own this pattern. I need to buy it in the next Simplicity sale, which I believe when I am filming this is going to be next weekend. I think that these pants will be perfect for work. They have a wide leg, they're fairly structured and they are flat front, they're not pleated. After my experience with making a pleated pair of pants recently, if you missed that video, I'll put it up in the cards but I'm a little bit shying away from doing more pleated pants. So I'm gonna stick with the flat front for the time. And the fabric that I chose for this is this really interesting and beautiful textured plaid fabric that I got from Metro Textiles last year. It's 100% cotton and it's fairly weighty and substantial. And I think that it'll hold that wide leg really nicely. And I just love the idea of having a window pane plaid pair of pants. I think it'll be perfect for work. I could easily style it with a button up or a turtleneck. So that one's definitely on my list. This next pair is for a collab that I'm doing. I don't think that we've talked about it and I don't know if we're ready to announce it publicly, but I will be doing a collab with another sewist in November and we have agreed that we're going to sew up the Closet Core Morgan jeans. Now I've sewn the Morgan jeans before back in 2017 or 2018. And from what I can remember, those pants didn't fit me very well and they were super low rise. So I will definitely need to put in some time and modify the rise because I just know that I'm not gonna like it the way that it's drafted. But I do really like the straight leg and I feel like a non-stretch denim jean would fit really well into my wardrobe. It's something that I could wear for work. And right now I actually do not own any dark wash jeans that I'm comfortable wearing. So even though I do have quite a few pair of jeans in my wardrobe already, I do think that adding this pair would be useful and beneficial and something that I would wear all the time. The fabric that I chose for this one is the Mind the Maker denim. It's a non-stretch denim. I believe it's a combination of cotton and poly. I used this exact fabric to make my Simplicity shirt jacket that I absolutely love. The fabric is a really nice quality, so I'm looking forward to cutting into this and making up a pair of jeans. The final pair of pants on my fall sewing list is a pair of Ponty work trousers. Now I've mentioned before that I don't really like wearing skinny pants. I don't think that they look that good on my particular body type. However, in the fall and winter, I do like to have some skinny jeans or leggings because I find them useful to wear tucked into knee-high boots or over the knee boots. And because I'm looking to add more workwear pieces, I decided to go with the Butterick 6858. I think this pattern's kind of underrated. I looked it up on Instagram and it seems like not very many people have made the pants. It's a wardrobe pattern that comes with several other pieces, but specifically I was looking at the pants because they have some really interesting seaming details and I think that they could actually look really nice and elegant for work. The fabric that I chose is another Ponty. This is sort of an evergreen color and this was another one that I'm pretty sure I got it at Style Maker, but I don't quite remember. Last year in Black Friday, I spent a lot of money on all the sales and they all kind of ran together. So I have trouble remembering where I bought things. And I know that I bought this fabric during that time. So that's why I don't really know for sure where I got it. If I can find the information where I got these fabrics and if they're still available, I will link them down in the description box. So because they are a fitted pair of pants, it's probably gonna take me a little bit of work to get the fit just right. So I probably won't use this as my first try, but I'll probably try to muslin it first in a cheaper fabric and then go from there. Let's move on to the next category. Now there are lots of tops that I would love to sew and have in my wardrobe, but I do have quite a few tops already. So I really try to limit myself to ones that I think I would actually wear. This first one is one that I actually need your help with. I recently became a Vicky Sews brand ambassador. And so part of my obligation is that I need to sew up Vicky Sew patterns and share them on my Instagram once a month. So I do have a couple of Vicky Sews patterns on my fall sewing list. And the first one I'm gonna share with you is called the Kaya blouse. 
It is a loose fitting, but not super oversized button up shirt. It has a tower placket on the sleeve. It has a drop shoulder. It's pretty much a classic sort of shirt and I love making shirts. So I'm really excited to make this one. As you can see, I really want to do it in a black and white plaid, but I'm not sure which one. So this is a much heavier fabric. It's a linen rayon blend and it has a little bit more structure. This one is a cotton rayon blend. I got this from Joann's and it's much lighter. So I'm having a hard time deciding which one would make the better Kaya blouse. So if you could weigh in in the comments and let me know whether you prefer the wider plaid from Joann or the darker plaid from DNH Fabrics, I would really appreciate your assistance in picking one. Also, I do have a discount code for Vicky Sews for their English language patterns. You can use the code Sarah in all caps and you can get 20% off all of their English language patterns. And I will put that link down in the description box. If you make a purchase using my code, I will get a small commission. And so thank you so much for your support. The next item I would like to make is a layering piece out of this beautiful merino jersey that I got from the fabric store. I actually have several different colors of merino jersey, so ideally I'd like to make more than just one, but I think this one's the most practical. It's kind of a charcoal gray color. So the pattern I was thinking about for this is a tried and true for me. It is the Victory Patterns Francis Top. I've made several different versions of this top, but I have actually not made the long sleeve yet. So that'll be a new one for me. And for this version, I'm thinking about doing the turtleneck because I just think having a close fitting layering turtleneck would go perfectly in my wardrobe. It could go under so many things like a slip dress or overalls or under a button up shirt and just give me that extra layer of warmth when it's really cold in the winter. The final top on my list is the Helen's Closet Gilbert shirt. Now, when I think about the Gilbert, I always think of it as a summer pattern because you, most of the time, the ones that I see are the ones with the short sleeves and the tie. And I do wanna try that at some point. But for this version, I'm actually thinking about making the long sleeve version that's a little bit longer. And I think I would probably add some elastic at the cuff to make it more of a bishop sleeve. Now, this fabric is 100% cupro that I got from Blackbird Fabrics. And I only bought one and a half meters, so I'm actually not sure if I have enough fabric to make the Gilbert, but I'm gonna try. I had originally bought this fabric to make a skirt, but as we already talked about, I don't really wear skirts as much in the fall and winter, and I think I get more use out of a shirt. And this fabric is just so soft and gorgeous. It really reminds me so much of sand washed silk. And actually when I was a teenager, I had a sand washed silk shirt that was very similar in color to this. So it just kind of brings me back and I would really kind of like to recreate that now. If you like watching my videos, I would so appreciate it if you'd give me a thumbs up because it helps YouTube spread my video out to new viewers. Thank you so much. Now it's time to move on to my most worn category, which is Now I say it's my most worn, I guess technically I would say that my most worn items are my exercise clothing and then probably my coat. But other than that, the category that I wear the most is loungewear. Now I do have quite a few loungewear pieces already in my closet, but because I wear it so much, I feel like I could use a few more. The first set I wanna talk about is another pattern that I do not actually own yet. It's from the newest Simplicity Fall Collection. The pattern is Simplicity 9636, and that also comes as a women's pattern, which is 9637. It's the same pattern, it's just different size brackets. And it's for the Mimi G cutoff hoodie and split hem leggings. I just really love that whole outfit and I want it for myself. For the pants, I have this athletic brushed poly that I bought last year. I I think this one was from Serge Fabrics. I'll try to double check and put it in the description box. This one is in a heathered navy color. And so my plan for the leggings, because this is an athletic fabric, I don't think that I need to put a zipper in it. My plan is just to make them pull on pants and I'm not gonna put the zippers in the legs either. I'm just gonna leave them open with the split. And then for the hoodie, I actually don't have any French terry or sweatshirting that I think would be appropriate. So I will need to look for some fabric, but I really, really like the view that has the curved hem. I just think that it's such a fun, unique take on loungewear and I really, really want that set for myself. My second loungewear set is using this French terry that I got from Morex Fabrics. This fabric was sponsored to me in exchange for a review on my YouTube channel. And if in case you missed that one, I'm gonna link that one up in the cards. But I think I have three or four yards of this. I have quite a lot. So the first piece I wanna make with it is the Pattern Scout Cozy Jacket. This is a cropped jacket and you can make it in either a knit or a woven. You can also do a collar or a hood. And then I also purchased an add-on extension where you could make it into a shirt jacket. The particular view that I think I'm gonna do for this is the zip front, but no hood. I'm gonna do the collar instead. 
And then for the pants, I have in my stash Simplicity 9337, which is a unisex loungewear wardrobe pattern. And there's some joggers in there that look like they're a little bit of a looser fit. I'm not crazy about the really tight fitting joggers. I want something that's more like a track pant. So I was thinking about using that pattern and possibly sizing up to make them a little bit looser and more comfortable. But I do think that the two of them together would make a really cute track suit kind of set. And I could wear that all winter long and be warm and cozy. Now let's move on to the final category. Now I do not need a ton of these because I don't wear dresses very much in the winter. I'm trying to embrace that reality, although I have made it a pledge that I'm gonna to try to wear a dress or a skirt three days a week, but when it gets really, really cold, I'll probably just abandon that and stay in my sweatpants because it's just too cold to wear a dress. So when I was organizing my plans as far as dresses are concerned, I tried very hard to mostly pick things that could be worn all year round so that I'm not limiting myself to wearing it just in the winter. The first one is the only one that is a little bit more winter focused. It is the Vicky Sews Andy dress. This pattern was just released in their new collection and I really, really love it. It's a polo style dress that is ankle length. It has thumb cuffs and it's just a very loose, easy fit. Now I only have two yards of this sweater knit and so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it ankle length. I might have to actually cut it off at knee length. I'll just have to play around and see. Also, I'm not really sure how I feel about it being so loose in the waist. I might try to shape it in a little bit, or maybe I could just cinch it in with a belt. Again, I'm not quite decided yet. And the last thing is I don't like thumb cuffs, so I'm definitely not gonna do that because I just find them annoying. So I'll probably replace the thumb holes with just like regular cuffs. And I did receive this pattern and the Kaya blouse for free as part of my brand ambassadorship. So the fabric that I chose for this one is a beautiful sweater knit. I think I got this one at DNH Fabrics, although I'm pretty sure they also have it at Style Maker. It is in this really lovely brown color. And I think that it would make such a cozy sweater dress. I'm super excited to make this up. I'm picturing myself wearing it with tights and boots and just being so warm and cozy. And then you can layer on top of it also if it's really cold. The next dress that I am looking to make is the So Liberated Hinterland dress. I purchased this pattern recently after seeing Michelle from the Sewing Bunny make one up and I thought it just looked so nice and double gauze. Now because we're heading into winter, I'm going to make the longer sleeve version. I believe the longest sleeve they have is a three quarter length. I might even try to extend mine to actual long sleeves, but we'll just see how it goes. For the fabric, I chose this purple double gauze that I got from Joanne Fabrics and I bought three and a half yards of this so I should have enough for whatever view I decide to make. But this is one of those dresses that I do think that I could get wear out of it in the winter with tights and boots, but also I could probably wear it in other seasons as well. The third dress I plan to sew up this fall is a denim shirt dress. This has been on my personal wish list for quite a long time now and I haven't gotten around to it, but I'm seeing more and more denim dresses this season. I think that it's particularly popular right now and just it's a good enough excuse for me to go ahead and sew one up. I have this really beautiful Lyocell denim that I got from Joanne Fabrics a while ago. And I do have a few different patterns to choose from, which I think is part of my paralysis. I'm having a hard time picking which pattern I should use. But right now I'm leaning toward McCall's 8139, and I'd probably make the knee length version. I like this pattern because it has slash pockets. The skirt is a little bit straighter. It has a little bit more structure, but it's still a very classic looking shirt dress. I think that it would be really easy to layer in the winter time, but it's another one that I could also wear it in other seasons. So I do really like this pattern, but I reserve the right to change my mind. If you're looking for even more inspiration on what to sew up this fall and winter, check out my recent Cezanne video. Thank you so much for watching.